Hey guys and welcome to my channel. This is Siren speaking and today I'm gonna do a speed build of a modern mansion. As always this build can be downloaded from the Sims 4 gallery and the link is posted in the description below. You can also search my origin ID which is Tyrant Sims and check out my other builds as well. If you like my videos and builds please follow, subscribe on Twitter, YouTube and Twitch and spread the word to all the people you know out there. If you don't want to watch the entire speed build, you can skip right to the video tour. This build is slightly different than what I've been uploading before. I wanted to have this huge mansion in modern design and I was watching some picture of modern architecture online and I found a few buildings that I used as inspiration for this build and it will have a lots of huge rooms and open spaces, high ceiling, and a lot of big windows so you can get as much natural light as possible. I will use very plain stylish colors and surfaces and it will be a lot in black and white again because I am a black and white kind of person. And yeah, I was really having fun with the interior part here. There will be three main bedrooms, one guest room and a bedroom for the butler. I assume that a house like this will need a butler to do whatever butlers do. And there is a huge kitchen, a dining area and several living rooms. And there is a bar and a lounge or something. And there will be two separate bathrooms and one bathroom in the butler's room and one bathroom in one of the main bedrooms. I assume that the butler needs a different bathroom than the rest of the house. I don't know. So I haven't really thought about the family who lives there. They obviously have lots of money and kind of stylish I assume. But there is only three bedrooms despite the size of the house which may be a little odd. We could pretend that some of the kids have moved out and the parents have refurnished bedrooms into living rooms or into the gym, I don't know. Anyway, the first floor is only meant as foundation, it's not furnished at all. You can of course do whatever you want with it because there is plenty of room there. So if you need more bedroom, for example, you can put them there. If you have seen my videos, you might notice that I jump around a lot, especially in this one. I have these huge rooms that I don't know what I want to use them as. I have rarely a plan when I first start out, I just go along as I build. And if I can't decide or come up with something that I want to decorate the room as, I just look at other rooms and start there instead. And sometimes when I work in one area, I have this idea in my head that I would try out somewhere else and start to work there before I forget them. So that's why I'm not really working consistent in each room. I try to edit it out as much as I can because I think it's rather annoying to watch me going back and forth to different rooms like this. So I use some time lapse as well. So everyone, I am going to tell you the rest of my road trip I had in the United States today. And part 1 and 2 of this trip can be found in my Tuscany farmhouse build. And we have come as far as... Well, we're driving through the southern states and arrived in Orlando. There were two reasons why we were staying in Orlando. One, Lisa's aunt have this huge house there that she only used in holidays and vacation and we were going to stay there for free. And two, my biggest childhood dream is here. Disney World, guys. I am a huge fan of Disney, especially the old classics ones like Beauty and the Beast. Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Aladdin and so on. So we are driving straight to Disney World and we have been so much in the car the past two days that we haven't really noticed that the climate had changed drastically. We were starting in New York and remember it's early February. So we're standing on the parking lot stacked with way too much clothes. So we search our bags to find something more suitable to wear since it was really warm. So I was looking around while I was changing clothes in the parking lot. No towels, no cover and I tried to hide between the cars. And I was just hoping that no one would come by to report me from flashing. But it was fine, nothing interesting did happen. So Disney World is everything I thought and dreamed it would be. 
really overcrowded, lots of screaming kids, extremely long waiting, bad food and of course expensive souvenirs. But sure, we did have fun and we were spending two days in Disney World visiting two parks each day, which is quite a lot. So we visited Epcot, Magic Kingdom, and in Kingdom, which was great, and Disney Hollywood Studios. To be honest, we didn't do much here, so there's not much to tell. But at the end of the first day, we were gonna take this kind of uh, water ride boat thing. So we sat in some sort of a wheel thingy and uh, paired up with a boy and his father. And the wheel were turning around and stuff just as we were about to head upwards. And suddenly the father started to laugh. And we were confused because we didn't know anything and then he pointed at me and said you got the worst seat and told us that he got that seat the last round. So at the end of the ride you always get this big finish and trust me I definitely got the worst seat. I got these huge waves splashing in my lap and I was soaking wet and I was like fuck my phone. And when we left the ride, it was pouring water from my shorts and my shoes made this splashing sound when I walked. And I tried to squeeze as much water as possible out of me before we were heading back to the car. And the employees standing at the exit was laughing and asked if we were taking the water ride. And Nissan was laughing so hard that Basta was completely dry even though we were sitting right next to each other. He got some splash on his foot. Not cool guys, not cool. So we were ready to get to the house and settle in and try to call the aunt so she could tell us where she had left the key. But we couldn't get a hold of her and not long after his cousin called. So this is what was meant to happen. Lisa's aunt was going to send the key by mail to one of the neighbors so we could get in. But this is what was really happening. She didn't send down the keys because she wanted to meet me. Yes, me. And she was on her way early this morning driving the five hours long drive so she could get there before us. But she had barely got out on the road when she got hit by another car. So the poor lady had a broken arm, broken leg and surgery and you name it. But she was alive. And kind of well all considered and the reason why I laugh at this is because she's fine today and the whole scenario was just crazy. But anyway we found a hotel room that we rented and later on in the evening she called us. She wanted to know if we were okay. Seriously she's the one who had surgery just hours before and she asked if we are okay and guess what? That crazy old lady still insisted to come down and meeting me. So she was looking at plane tickets and said she could come by tomorrow since she couldn't drive anymore. She was really determined by coming down so we had to call Alyssa's cousin and tell her to talk some sense in the woman and talk her out of it. So the three of us made her realize that she couldn't travel in her condition and I had to promise to come back another time. So that was basically Orlando guys and we are about to enter our final destination, Miami. There is a few things we wanted to do here and our main priority was to chill on Miami beach and do nothing. We've been running more than we've been walking for a week and a half so we are starting to get pretty tired. So towards Miami beach it is. I'm not a fan of open water to be honest, there is a lot of scary stuff in it and yes I have seen too many movies, seen too many documentaries and read too many articles about what's down beneath so I try to avoid it. Second, I do get seasick really fast and that occurs even when I bathe whenever there are waves. I know it sounds stupid and you might think it just in my head but it's not and if it were I would be really really happy because I could do something about that. And three, the water is salty and sticky and even though I have been living in the Norwegian coast most of my life, I'm not used to bathe in salt water because I'm living 400 meters from normal water and my uncle used to live 15 meters away from a huge lake that he owned and he made a small beach there so we could swim around. But anyway, back to Miami Beach. 
I did get wet, I did take a few laps and then I was ready to get some colors. So I laid down in one of the many beds on the beach determined to get this amazing brown color and Lisa said that I should use some sunscreen. And I was like, I will do that in half an hour, I just want some ground colors first. And I was laying on my stomach and I fell asleep. I woke up around two hours later and was thinking, fuck, but I rolled over on my back and wanted to get some more ground colors on the other side and of course I fell asleep for like an hour. When I woke up I put some sunscreen on and kind of knowing I was a little too late. This had I pretty much been bathing the entire time and was walking around the beach without any sunscreen himself. So we packed our stuff together and were chilling at our hotel room for a while then decided to get something to eat and drive around to take a look in the city. And while we were driving I suddenly started to feel this itchy feeling on my legs and stomach and I couldn't really see since it was dark and then I came to think about me falling asleep in the sun and I was thinking oh no. So. I told him to find a pharmacy so we could get some aloe vera and when we came in the light I had these lovely red colors on my legs and the burns started to hit me. But that was nothing compared to Lisa's legs and arms, they were really red. So we got some aloe vera, rushed back to the hotel and smushed us all up in aloe vera and went to bed. It started to hurt really really bad and I couldn't even have the blanket on top of me because it hurt too much and I was rather cold without it so I was holding my blanket with my hands so it wouldn't touch my stomach the entire night and when we woke up the next morning Lisa's legs and shoulders were turned purple literally purple guys so we should probably have seen a doctor or something but he said it was fine. So we got dressed in long sleeves and pants so we wouldn't get more burnt and took off. We found this mini girl thing that we wanted to try because I had never done that before. Apparently we both sucked at it and it was bad. And we came to the last hole eventually and I wasn't able to make it. And I started to get really annoyed and frustrated and Lizard he had been winning long time ago. And I was hitting the ball over and over and then I used all the force that I had and hit some sort of a sculpture and a piece flew off. Lizard was laughing so hard and I was like, are you shitting me? This is just one of those days. So I looked around and no one else was there so we left before anyone discovered anything. I know I'm a bad person, but I really didn't want to face the consequences that day. I was in pain. That's at least what I'm telling myself to ease my conscience today. So this is basically the end of my road trip in the United States. We had really fun despite the speed ticket and the sunburn. And yeah, we became really good friends after we had known each other for maybe six months. And we found out that we are really awesome traveling together and have been visiting a lot of other places since. So I have some time left before the video tour and I want to talk a little more about my build. Currently I am working on another living room and these were actually meant as a hallway but I felt it was too big for having nothing in it so I furnished it with a sofa and some bookshelves and this house doesn't really have much hallways just a small entrance in the first floor or ground floor as someone says. And the reason for this is that these rooms are quite huge and it would look weird to have nothing in them. And hallways for me are quite empty, only with a few furnitures. And a house like this needs a bar of course. I know that my bar have the same cabinet as the bathrooms but I really fell in love with this grey colour. I had never used it before so I wanted to try them out in my bathrooms and I thought it looked really good. And as always I cluttered my bar with some glasses. This time I used empty glasses so I hope the sims doesn't clean them up as they usually do. So this is the butler's bedroom. There will be a private bathroom here. 
I don't know if that's normal, but I will find it weird that the butler would use the same toilet as me and have their toothbrush next to mine. But I guess it's kind of luxurious to have a private bathroom. But then again, if you can afford a butler, I guess you can afford to have a separate bathroom for him or her as well. I don't know if there are female butlers in The Sims. So far, i only seen men though. And as all the other bathrooms, I use the same interior and showers and clutters, so it's really consistent throughout the build and that's what I was going for. But altogether, the bedroom is quite small and modest with only a few furnitures. Builds like this, I feel is rather tedious to make sometimes, because when you have a lot of rooms, you have to find something to use in them, and if you have rooms that are too big it will be hard to fill them up with something that's at least my opinion and i find it really hard making bills i feel there is so much out there and sometimes it's hard to come up with something completely original and once in a while i am really happy and excited because i find a way to use certain items and later to find out that auto have done this for years already but i guess that's what you get when you just started for six months ago or something besides i really enjoy watching other creators work i get inspiration find new ways to use objects of course it's always fun to watch the most popular ones, but there are so many hidden gems out there that it's hard to find unless you know where to look. And if you are one of those creators or if you know anyone, post a link below or tweet them so I can take a look myself. I am just finishing up my final bedroom. At first I decorated this as a children's room since this was next to the master's bedroom I thought it would be suitable but I changed my mind so there is no children's bedroom here because I wasn't able to get the room as I first wanted it to be which totally annoys me but then again I haven't really thought about the family who lives there and therefore I find it rather hard to have a very personal touch on the bedrooms. Like when I was leaving home, that's the only room I could decorate myself and decide over. So the room looked pretty much how I personally wanted it. And that's how I think most people have their bedrooms as well. I changed this upper floor a little from how it originally looked. Most because I didn't know what to put in the rest of the rooms. And also because I thought the roofing and the shapes looked so traditional which is not the idea here. But I wanted the upper floor to be like a gym or a place where you can work out, but I found the room a little too big, so I split them up and decorated another living room. Surprise, surprise! But yet again, we have to wrap this up, and I will as always give you a cinematic video tour in the end with the mandatory free music. Again, I just want to thank each and every one of you so much for watching and remember to like, follow and subscribe at Twitter, YouTube and Twitch so you won't miss out of my builds and videos. And please also comment below and let me know what you liked and didn't like so I can improve my future builds and videos. So enjoy the rest of the video and I'll see you guys in a very short time.